welcome to the Word of His Kingdom. Today, we will be discussing on issues that concerns every one of us as children of God, what we're going through, what the whole world, the challenges that every one of us are faced with as this season, and what this season represents to a lot of us. It is a word of encouragement that God has for his people to strengthen us, to help us to stand till the end, because there shall be a performance of the word of God as it's been declared to you in the secret place, in the open, that every word of God that has been spoken into your life will surely come to pass. And so today we'll be taking a look at the book of Luke, chapter 1, as the Spirit of God gives us utterance, we we'll believe that we'll be strengthened and we'll be encouraged. My name is Dr. Chinyara Ifacha, and with me in the studio today is Prophetess, Dr. Lona Baldonado, a woman of God God is using in this hour. Our sister was not able to make it today. We know that today God will touch your life. Listen and be blessed. Amen. Amen. Woman of God, God the Lord gave me a message concerning this season. And he took me to the book of first, the book of Luke, chapter one. And I began to take a look at the life of two significant people who were favored. People who were not really in the limelight, but God chose them and they are being talked about in this season. And I saw the life of the life of Zachariah, a priest of the Lord, and the wife, his beautiful wife Elizabeth, also the wife of the priest. But they had a butt in their lives. They were faced with all kinds of obstacles and challenges. They, were, they came you know, face to face with things that could have made them not to focus on what God has said concerning their lives. But they never gave up on God. And they never stopped being who they were. They never stopped serving the Lord faithfully. And so today I want us to know that God understands what we're going through. There may be but in our lives, and that but is making some of us to begin to look back or to cast our hands to slack or to begin to say God is no longer God. This is the season that every one of us are looking forward to, and we have so much we have looked up to God for, and we have been believing God to manifest in this season, and some of us may not have seen those things, and we're getting frustrated, and we are saying but the end of the year is coming and we're not seeing anything. And probably you don't have any reason to rejoice in this season. Or you don't have any reason why you, should, you think that truly this Christmas, you know, you have cause to give God praise. I want us to take a look at these lives. Luke chapter 1, if I take it from verse 5, during the time of King Herod, king of Judah. And there was a certain priest whose name was Zechariah. He was involved in the daily service of the Lord. If you jump to verse 6, verse 6, it says, they, Both this man and his wife, both of them were righteous in the sight of God, walking blameless in, in all the commandments and requirements of the Lord. Yet, they had a butt in their lives. Woman of God, they had a butt in their lives. They were working blamelessly, faithfully, committedly, dedicatedly to the work of God. Yet they had a but in their lives. And sometimes people think because you are serving the Lord faithfully, you shouldn't have any problem. Yeah. But they had a but in their lives. I'm going somewhere. He said, but they had no child. For Elizabeth was barren and both were far advanced mm. in years. This brings me to the dimension of impossibilities. They were faced with two births in their lives. Yeah. One was they were barren. The second one is that they were far advanced in age, which means their situation was a hopeless situation. They had a hopeless case at hand. And it says here, Now while on duty serving as priest before, the God of his, before God in order of his division, as was the custom of the priesthood, 
it fell to him by lot to enter the sanctuary, that is the temple of the Lord, to burn incense. And all the throne of people were praying outside in the court at the hour of incense. And there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing at the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and fear took possession of him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, because your petition was hard. Woman of God, you know, our petition has been hard by God. You know, that, that is so beautiful. Because sometimes, as you were saying, you know, we read different things and we think that other people don't have problems. And here was a situation, as she mentioned, that look hopeless. And yet they're walking in all the ways of God. Have you ever said, Lord, I'm doing everything that I know to do. I'm, I'm going to church. I'm praying. I'm, I'm doing all these things. And yet they had to hold on. They had to be steadfast. And I believe sometimes in life, we just have to reevaluate where we are and say, you know what? I'm going to hold on. I'm going to be steadfast, no matter what something may look like. The fact that they were getting older, past the years of childbearing, and they had no children because Elizabeth was barren. But you know, with God, all things are possible. And so what, what I was so blessed in this particular reading, this particular illustration of of holding on was the fact that Zechariah never gave up. He kept continuing in that priest office. He kept doing the work of the Lord. And you know, keep doing good. Keep doing the work of the Lord. Keep holding on to that promise because there is an appointed time to every seed. Amen. You know, what, what the amazing thing about this whole thing is the fact that they were still in the place of prayers. And I know that so much prayer has been going on all over the world. Christians praying, believers praying, those who don't even know God praying, everybody praying. But I've come to say to somebody today that at the place of prayer is the place of your visitation. Come because it now. was while they were praying that the angel of the Lord visited. Yes. And when the angel of the Lord, it was not just any angel that visited. I discovered that the angel that visited was the angel that stays in the presence of the Lord, which is angel Gabriel. God, when a petition comes before the Lord, he sends the one is, who stays in his presence. Yes. And each time that one is released, he goes forward with an answer to our petition because God has heard of our petition. If you remember the book of Daniel, when Daniel prayed interceding for his people because it was such a time as we have found ourselves in this time. And then what happened yes. that when he began to intercede, the Bible said also his petition also was heard by God. And what happened? God sent forth the same yes. angel Gabriel to go visit the earth. So I want to say to you today that your season of visitation in a place of prayer is now. And God is already released the angel of his presence to go forth. And he never goes to you or never comes to you empty-handed. He always comes with an answer to your petition. Hallelujah. And you know what is so beautiful is how... When the angel appeared and brought a message from God, and he said to Zechariah, and this is what's so amazing, when he, when he appeared and said, your prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And the name John means gift from God. So not only did this angel come with a message from God because he stood in the very presence of God, but he also named this child before this child was born. He prophetically spoke into the life of Zachariah and Elizabeth, which was something that was so different because in those days, the baby would always be named after the lineage of the father. But instead, the angel came saying, your prayer is heard and the name of his son shall be called John. A gift from God. That's so amazing. God is so precise. And God listens to every prayer. And that day came that it was their day. It was their day for the manifestation. They needed a word. And you know, sometimes 
evangelists, we need a word from God. And I believe we're here today to give a word. I believe when you tuned in today, you said, I need a word. Maybe some of you are saying, you know, my life is barren. Uh, you know, I don't mean maybe barren, not giving birth to a baby, but just barren. You look around at your life and you say, I don't see anything happening. Well, we came because we've been in the presence of God, haven't we? We've been praying for you today, and we've been in the presence of God. And you know what? Ministers are called angels. We are ministering spirits that have come to give you a word from God that your appointed time will come. Don't give up because God has a miracle with your name on it, and your prayer is going to be heard as we continue this discussion today. Our prayer is that you will be ignited to hold on until your season comes, because it is going to come. Hallelujah. And it's so amazing to know that the season of God's intercession, answering or coming to hearing your petition is called the season of great favor. When you have found favor, they yes. found favor before God. And God sent forth an answer to their request of many years. And the, 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 the amazing thing is that the answer of God to them was so overwhelming because it was so big, the impossible become possible. And yes. the hopelessness became hopeful. And yes. what happened was that they were so amazed that overwhelmed that what happened that fear gripped the heart of the one. And I yes. want to say to you that God is about to do something so awesome in your life that you will be terrified. Mm -hmm. God is about to do something so great in your life that you will be troubled because Zechariah was troubled because of what, what he saw. He, was, he never expected it. And the Bible said he was afraid. And I said to you, in the name of Jesus, let the spirit of fear this day give way so your heart will receive that which God has for you in the name of Jesus. And another thing I discovered, woman of God, is the fact that God is preparing a people who are going to be a foreigner. And God's spirit is coming to overshadow this people. Yes. overwhelm them, overshadow them and in the process of incubation just like it was in the beginning in the book of Genesis we find out that the earth was without form and darkness had covered the surface of the day mm -hmm. and what happened the spirit of God at that time brooded upon the surface of the day and what was going on was that the warmth of the spirit was permeating and the light permeating darkness mm -hmm. and darkness was gradually giving way Amen. so I'm saying to you today this Christmas or this season should not be your season like any other. It should be your season that you will receive the revelation of God and prepare yourself for that intercession of the Spirit. That when the Spirit of God comes upon you, because God is preparing you and I as foreigners for the second coming of Christ, as it was in the time of John the Baptist, that he came yeah. as the forerunner of Christ. What happened is that he came by special intervention of the Lord and Bible wants us to know when we read that this was a word of God coming to pass. So there is going to be a performance of the word of God that God has given to you concerning your life, yes. his purpose for your life, your destiny and the vision of God for your life. There must be a performance because it's not about you. The spirit of God is going to overwhelm you and I and the warmth of his spirit and the light of God because God is bringing out a people who are going to be a light in this world covered in darkness. Woman of God. Yes. And you know what is so, so beautiful is the fact that God just didn't give him any son. He gave him a prophet. He gave him them a powerful, powerful prophet that would go, it said, turn the hearts of the children and shall go forth in the spirit and power of Elijah. This wasn't just any son that was being born to them. And you know, sometimes as we prayed, and, and we've all been there, evangelists, we've all been there where we're praying for certain circumstances. But you know, God has perfect timing. We, all, we used to always say, you know, God is always on time. Oh, yeah. He, he doesn't come when we always want him, but he's always on time because his timing is so perfect. Because you see, at that time, there needed to be a prophet, a prophet named John.
And so God handpicks his Zachariah and Elizabeth, and they keep walking in the ways of God because God is preparing them for something great. And you know, you may be there praying and doing that, but in the meantime, those prayers are touching your life, and you're being prepared for something great, something that you can't even imagine, as she was saying, to be that light of the world. So when we go through things and we don't see things happen right away, we know that God is doing something tremendous within us. He's allowing his divine power to cleanse us, to to get us to walk by faith and not by sight. And so we cannot give up because something great was going to happen. There was something that was going to be given to them, which came to pass, which was the prophet John. It said, Jesus said of John, there was no greater prophet until Jesus came. No greater prophet. Yet he didn't even do a miracle. But he was given to this godly couple that kept on serving God. Zechariah that had to go in the temple every day. And Elizabeth, that he was serving God every day. I imagine he was praying for people, evangelists. I imagine he was praying for the childless. I imagine he was seeing others given birth. And Elizabeth was seeing others given birth. But you know what? He kept his focus doing the work of the Lord. Keep your focus in prayer because God is going to bring that promise to pass. And you know what? It's going to be exceedingly abundantly above all that you could even ask or think. Because this is the year, I believe, of his power and glory. And he gave unto them a special son, which was the prophet John. And you know, if looking at the same uh, Luke chapter 1 verse 28, talking about an, the same angel visiting Mary again and saying, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying. The same being troubled because the impossible is taking place. And so God is saying he's about to do something that you yourself would not even believe. You will be wondering, how can this be? Mary was in that situation. Zachariah was in that situation that when it happened suddenly, they found themselves troubled because they had never seen it before and they have never had such thing happen to anybody before. And here, the same manner, the angel said, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. The favor of God has come upon the earth. And I pray for you today that God's favor will visit you and you will open your heart for the Spirit of God to overtake you, to overshadow you, and let that which God has started in your life take place in the name of Jesus. I pray for those of you, if you're not born again today, this is an opportunity for you to say, just let's pray and say after me, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Today. Today. I thank you. We thank you. For coming in ministering to me today for coming and ministering today i ask in the name of jesus we ask in the name lord of jesus, jesus lord jesus come into my heart come into my heart and be the lord of my life be the lord of our life i renounce my old ways yes and i accept the lord jesus christ as my personal lord and master in jesus name father they have prayed this prayer i pray lord of god that your spirit will take them over from today and the blood of jesus will cleanse them from all unrighteousness and you put a new garment on them and let the favor of the lord be manifest in their lives today in jesus name hallelujah amen praise the lord praise woman of god, god. i amen. want to say today that god has been so faithful to us bringing us from the beginning of the year to this point in time and that his spirit is moving like never before and the anointing of the Lord is released upon his people breaking yokes. With me today, once again in the studio, is the woman of God here. My name is Dr. Chinyere Efacho, President of Proof of Vine International Ministries, California. Amen. Woman of God. Dr. Lorna Baldonado, and I am President of Innis Glory Ministries International. And you can write me at P.O. Box 2523. Downey, California, 90242. Put your prayer requests. If this word has been a blessing to you, also you can tuck in your love offerings to our ministries to, to help us as we continue to go forth, not only here, but throughout the world as we continue to evangelize and take the message of the word of his kingdom to all over the United States and the world as God delivers. May you be blessed today in Jesus' name. Amen.
Welcome to the Word of His Kingdom. I'm Dr. Lorna Baldonado, and along with Dr. Shinirei Ifecho, we are here today, sent from God, to bring a word just for you. So as you listen, I believe you're going to be blessed today because we've been praying and seeking the Lord, and God has a word. In Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, was a very, very mighty scripture, a powerful scripture that came forth in the book of Isaiah. You know, Isaiah was a powerful prophet of God. And he began to speak things prophetically. And hundreds and hundreds of years later, they came to pass. And he said, therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. You know, at that time, they were very in a lot of darkness, a lot of things happening, just like we see in the world today. But in the midst of it, it said, God himself, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. And this sign was to be, behold, a virgin can, shall conceive and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. And he said, butter and honey shall he eat that he may know how to refuse the evil and choose the good. In other words, this one that was going to come would be eating butter and honey, which represented the word of God. He was prophesying of a king that was going to come. And he continued his message in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. I mean, here this prophet came because they were in such a mess, such darkness, Wars, people had backslidden and gone away from God, and and they were in this state that wasn't good. But Isaiah was given a word from God that they would receive a sign, and this would be the sign that a virgin would give birth. And he said, as he began to speak to them, and he gave them hope, he said unto them, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And if they ever needed to have an Everlasting Father, if they ever needed to have counsel, and if they ever needed in the dark state that they were in to have the Prince of Peace come, they needed this word. And I believe that even in this time, that even in this time of darkness today, the, that you are looking for that peace and that joy and that inner peace that only God can give. And so we are going to talk a little bit about peace. Because only through Jesus, only through the living word, the anointed word, the prophetic word, that that Prince of Peace can come and give you the peace that you desire in your life today. Praise the Lord. Wow, awesome. The Prince of Peace. Peace <laughs> is a personality. Yes. And his name is Jesus. Yes. And it's only Jesus can, that can make you in the midst of storm and you're calm. It's only with the Prince of Peace peace that you are in the midst and thrown inside the fire and you're not moved you're not rattled people see you and they wonder why are you still looking the way you're looking despite the fact that the flames of fire is all around you because you have the prince of peace with you Emmanuel God with us and that is to say when God is with his people we will not be moved with all that is going on in this world. That's right. I happened to watch a, a, watch a movie, a, 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 just a program where a Christian man was being beheaded and he was still thanking God, praising God. It's only the Prince of Peace that can give somebody such peace that you are not moved even in the face of death. And I want to say that this is a time that we are remembering again. Yes. When this Prince of Peace came 
this gift that God gave to us, that if we open our heart, the peace of God will rest upon yes. us that passes all understanding. You cannot begin to explain it. Mm -hmm. That peace, you cannot explain it. Because it's so awesome that when the peace of God is upon you or within you, you're just not afraid of anything. You are not moved by any situation. You're not right. You're not shaken by anything. Because you know your Redeemer live it. That peace is a Redeemer. Oof. That peace Hallelujah. is the Lord of hosts. Yes. That peace is the one that thoroughly pleased our curse. According to the book of Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 33 now. That peace is the one that fights for us. That peace is the one that has an answer to every hopelessness. Yes. To every discouragement. To every impossibility. When the peace of God comes upon us, every other thing bows out. Yes. And so I want to say to you today, if you have not yet received that peace of God in your life, today is an opportunity that God has given to you to say, I don't want to pass through this season like other times. I don't want to be like, oh, some people say it is just a season. Some people say it is Christmas to them. Some people call it a holiday. Yes. But to you who have heard the word of God and you know God, it's a season for you to open your heart and say, let the Prince of Peace come into my life. Yes. For without peace, many have committed suicide. That's right. Without the Prince of Peace in the lives of many, they have died before their time. So many of them have developed all kinds of things that has come upon their bodies because they did not know the Prince of Peace. Yes. And if you do not know the Prince of Peace today, I want you to say after me, Lord Jesus, this is an opportunity you've given to me yet again. I have been told you are the Prince of Peace and I don't have peace in my marriage. I don't have peace in my body. I don't have peace in my job. I don't have peace in my business. I don't have peace anywhere, with, even with my children. But I have been told that when you come into a situation, you come and your peace rests upon that thing and that person will have peace. I will say to you today, come into my life and be the Lord of my life that I may begin to experience peace. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Awesome. You know, it's so beautiful to know that peace is a person. That he says something so very powerful in Romans 14, 17. He said, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It's not religion. It's not doing certain things of religion. But it is this. Righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So you see... Jesus said, in this world, you'd have trouble, you'd have tribulations, you'd have difficulties. And, you know, sometimes in life, it, you know, we don't feel peace, then we can go to the Word, and we can go to prayer. And we know that He is that living Word, how the Holy Spirit will just come and enlarge that Word and begin to put peace in your heart today. It said, the mind that is stayed on thee has perfect peace. And you see... The enemy wants you to get your mind on this and on that. But God said the mind that is stayed on him, the mind that is stayed on the Lord Jesus Christ will have perfect peace. Peace that's perfected because he's the prince of anything that can give you peace. People look for peace, evangelists, in many things. They look for it in drugs, in alcohol. You know, they look for it in certain things. But when you find Jesus... When you find the Prince of Peace, the, well, the one that has the key to peace, the key of David, in every situation, you can have peace in the midst of a storm. And the only reason you can have peace in the midst of a storm is because you know who is in that ship with you. You know that you're going to make it through. You're going to the other side. Because you know that he's the fourth man in the fire. You know that when you pray, the peace of God will fill your heart and your spirit. Because Jesus said, Behold, I'm going to send the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, that will bring peace and joy to you. You know, when Jesus was born, it said glad tidings came. It was a time of rejoicing, a time of joy. And you know, now that we see different things, we see difficulties and things happening in the world. Well, we have to come closer to God. And I just believe that God is drawing his people. That God is drawing us into the inner chambers of prayer. He's saying, come into my presence. Because there you will find peace for your soul through the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Because God's word cannot lie. Man may lie. Religion can't help you. But the word of the Lord is a sure word. And it will bring peace to your soul. Your mind sometimes goes in different direction. But when you begin to feed with the word of God, that's why it said Jesus said, it said of Jesus, the king that was coming, butter and honey would he eat, that he would know how to refuse evil. Because way back in the garden, when Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it began to bring negative thoughts into their mind. But Jesus came and his mind was pure. And it says today we can have the mind of Christ when we take hold of that word. I'm just sensing there's people out there, evangelists, that don't have peace today. And I'm going to pray for you. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for those that are struggling. You may know Jesus, but maybe things are happening in your life that you don't understand. And I pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to fill you with his Holy Spirit. To fill you with joy and peace. The Bible says joy and peace in believing that you can be encouraged today to believe once again that God will not fail, that he will give you an inner peace that makes no sense. It makes no sense to have an inner peace when everything's going left and you're going right. But there's something about God that when he begins to give you peace, it's like a blanket. It's like an anointing that comes upon you that you know that you know that no matter you don't see it with the naked eye, but you know in your heart and in your spirit that everything's going to turn out according to that word. You know, John chapter 14, verse 27 says, Peace, I live with you. Yes. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. Or oh, what an awesome word in a time like this where the world presents something else to us presents darkness, presents the negative, presents the impossibilities, presents discouragement, presents hopelessness. But God is saying to us, peace here is a gift. The gift of God that he has given to us, just as God gave to us this gift. Christ is the gift that God gave to us, his only begotten son. He came, the gift that he left with the disciples is also the gift of his personality. The gift of peace. Not as the world gives. The gift of the world will always have us back to it. But the gift of God is without nothing. No attachment. And he said he does not give the gift as the world gives it. He said let not your heart be troubled. Don't be moved by what you're going through. Don't be moved by the darkness that has covered the whole earth. Don't be rattled by anything that is happening around you. Because the peace of God has come to stay and another scripture that I found here is John chapter 16, verse 33. He said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. If you do not have Christ in your life, you don't have that gift of peace. My saying this means that you can have, you can be going to church and you don't have Christ in your life. And then when little things happen or big things happen, the way you will handle it, will be different from the way if you have peace in you. And he's saying to you today that his desire is that this season you will ask the peace of God. You will receive the gift of peace of God. And he said, in this world you will have trouble. He didn't tell them they were not going to have trouble. Trouble will always come. But when you have the peace of God in you, the difference is clear. And so that's what he's saying but take heart. I have overcome the world. So the gift of, of peace is already there for us just to accept the peace. Yeah. And once we accept that peace, we become overcomers because the gift of God is the overcoming spirit of God. And that overcoming spirit has he given unto us. If you want to be an overcomer in this season, in the days ahead, you must accept the peace of God into your life. Amen. And you know, I'm, re I'm reminded of how when Jesus walked the earth, how he so many times began to talk to his disciples and the time that he got in the boat with them. And, you know, Jesus just goes to sleep in the boat because he had that perfect peace. And yet Jesus came, he lowered himself to take on flesh, to take on a body. 
But he had that communica- communication always with his father. And he had that communication that gave him that peace. And so he lays down in the boat and he goes to sleep. And his disciples, which he teaches the word of God to, the storm comes in life, the waters fill in the, the, the boat, and they're afraid. And of course they're afraid because it looks like they're going to capsize and they're going to go down. And sometimes you feel in life like the enemy is trying to capsize you. And I'm sensing from the power of the Holy Spirit, you feel like you've been just floating along in life, but you feel like your boat's getting ready to capsize and you're going down. But I have a prophetic word for you that Jesus is in the boat. Jesus is walking beside you. You may not see him, but he's there. He's there in the power and the presence of his Holy Spirit. And so Jesus asleep on the boat. They wake him up. But today, through the word of God, I want you to wake. Wake up in Christ and know that just like Jesus, when he woke up and he spoke to his disciples and he said to them, Oh, ye of little faith, why did you doubt? Well, they doubted because they looked at the water in the boat. They doubted because they looked at the storm. They doubted. But there had been a prophetic word that had gone forth that said from Jesus' mouth, let us go over to the other side. There was released a powerful word from Jesus' lips. We're going to make it to the other side. And Jesus rested in that. So when you take the word of God and you begin to fill your spirit with it, that's your prophetic word from God that you will make it, that there's peace, that, that he will bring you to the fulfillment of every promise. So as he spoke to them, he said, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? Because they began to look at the things that were going on around them. But Jesus, he was asleep. His eyes were shut. He wasn't looking at anything. His mind was there. Why? Because he knew the power of his father. He knew that when God gave him an assignment to go to the other side, he was going to make it to the other side. But there was also one more thing. He knew when he spoke and he uttered things that that word of God uttered from his mouth was a prophetic word. It's an anchor in your life. And when you begin to speak the word of God, it will go before you. It will build your future. And what you speak today, you will walk in tomorrow. And I'm speaking to somebody. Your boat is not going to capsize. Begin to change your words and you watch your world change. And you will begin to walk in that. You are not only going to the other side, but on the other side, you will increase and you will see God manifest the very promises that you thought were dead. God said, I will manifest them as long as you keep that word within you and keep speaking that word and prophetically speak it out. Because as you speak it out, there's an anointing in that word that the Holy Spirit will move upon and take you through Whatever situation, maybe it's in a broken marriage, maybe it's through a child that has gone away, maybe through a situation of sickness, whatever it is, you hold on to these words of promises, these words that God has given us, and you begin to declare and decree them and watch God move. He is right there with you, just like he was with the disciples in the boat. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 10 says, Though the mountains be shaken, Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> and the hills be removed. Yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. What an awesome scripture. Our God's covenant cannot be broken. He's not a man that speaks from the, sec- the right corner of his mouth. When he says a thing, he keeps to his word. God has a covenant with us, and that is the covenant of his peace. And he's saying that no matter what you're going through at this time, no matter the mountains that surround you, no matter the shakings of the earthquake, that his covenant of love is already established, and it cannot be taken away from you. And if you go further to Isaiah 55 verse 12, he said, you go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. What God is just saying to you today is that despite what is going on in your life, out of that darkness is going to come forth light. Out of that that impossibility is going to come forth possibilities. Out of that hopelessness is going to come forth hope. 
out of that trouble is going to comfort beauty. Out of your ashes is going to comfort beauty. Out of that thing that you have given up on is going to comfort testimonies. And everything around you, even those who have mocked you, will join to sing praises unto the Lord their God. And they're going to begin to, even the trees will begin to clap because of the mountains that have seen quaking and God did not allow your feet to be moved. And I sense there's somebody today who is saying, you just don't understand what I've been going through. But I've come to say to you today that today's message is actually for you. That God is releasing his peace. His peace is right there upon you. That when the peace of God overwhelms you, you will not even think about your situation. You can go to sleep and you will find yourself sleeping. You've been trying to sleep. You've been frustrated and you've been having insomnia. And you've been popping up tablets and medications for you to be able to sleep. But today, as the peace of God rests upon you, the yoke of the enemy is broken in your life. In the name of Jesus. I pray for you right now. Lord Jesus, behold, as many as are watching today, whose peace the enemy have taken from them. For this is the assignment of the enemy to come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Lord, today I ask in the name of Jesus that the anointing has been released even from this place. Let that anointing rest upon such lives. Let the yoke of the enemy be broken over their lives. Let the burden be lifted today. Let the mountains begin to take, get shake and begin to be removed. I ask, oh God, that your peace will rest in the lives of these ones in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, it's so beautiful because prayer is so powerful. And you see, as she was praying, she was prophetically speaking. And when we speak those things, God said, I will do it. That's why it's so important. You know, Jesus knew the power of words. He said, death and life are in the power of our tongue. And so situations in life, you know, just like the disciples when they told Jesus, don't you care that we're perishing? <laughs> so they began to speak defeat. But he said, why did you doubt, O ye of little faith? Jesus never spoke defeat. He looked at death and he said they're asleep. He always knew to speak the power of God's word. And so those of you today, whether it's whether you feel discouraged or you're sick in your body or maybe you're going, maybe some of you have gone through a long sickness and you're saying, you know what, I'm just tired of all this. Well, begin to change that and begin to say, I thank you, God, that I am healed. I am well. And begin to speak forth the mighty power of the word of the Lord. And you'll see the peace that we were talking about. It'll fill your spirit. It'll fill your mind. Because the word of God, how is he the prince of peace? How is Jesus the prince of peace? Have you ever thought about that? Because he's called the living word. He's called the living word. He, God loved him so much that he sent his son. And he sent his son to be the living word in flesh. And so that's why that peace comes when you take that and you say, Jesus, I know you're with me. And because of what you did on the cross, because of your birth. Do you know the birth of Jesus was the most rejoicing time of all? Because he broke through darkness. That was a breakthrough. He broke through the barriers that had kept men in darkness. And he brought the light because he is the light. And he will break through everything that holds you back. And he will bring light into that situation. And so as we celebrate the birth of Jesus in this month, we know he already came, he has already gone, and today he's here. But we celebrate the word of God. We celebrate what he did on the cross. We celebrate that he was our example and showed us that as we received him, that we are now the children of God and that we can speak the very promises that he has given us and that we too can walk in peace. That's our prayer for you today as we pray these prayers, that you be whole and have the peace of God in the midst of all this hustle and bustle and people shopping and doing all that. As we spoke earlier about it, the greatest gift is Jesus Christ and the gifts that he gives is joy peace, righteousness. He'll, he'll come into any situation. He's the God of hope. And he will bless you in any situation. He says in his word, 
that he is the very God of hope, the very essence of our peace. Do you have a word? Yeah, I just want to conclude with Romans chapter 14, verse 17. It says, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and approved by men. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. I pray that God's peace will rest upon us as we celebrate this Christmas season in Jesus' name. May you be blessed and we will see you next time for the word of his kingdom. God bless you.